this here is a two-man saw, and I'm only one man. See the problem? And I'm the kind of guy who'd rather try to figure out a way to do this by myself than to ask somebody for help and then owe them a favor where I got to lend them a tool or find a blind date for their sister. So I've come up with the red-green, one-man, two-man saw. First of all, on the one handle, you want to hook a couple of bungee cords and then attach them to something fixed, not your cat. Then on the other handle, throw a hunk of chain on there. Now you need a way to hook this chain onto one of your wheel nuts so that it won't slip off, okay? No problem for the creative handyman. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hey, if you have one of those non-slip differentials, give me a call before you try this. I really enjoy a good laugh. <laughs> and like so many of the good things in life, it's better if you start slow and then speed up later. that. Big schmozzle up at the lodge this week. Harold brought a bunch of executive pencil necks up from that <laughs> company he works for in the city. They've been staying at the lodge all week. They're like accountants, but without all the personality. <laughs> Excuse me, Uncle Rat. I have to talk to you. I gotta uh, talk to you. Oh, uh, yeah, what? <laughs> Did the masseuse drop the cappuccino maker into the spa, Harold? No, no. I'm just wondering, what does that smell come from Sticky Peterson's cabin? Sticky Peterson. <laughs> Wasn't that dangerous or toxic or something? Well, we monitor it pretty closely here. That's why we have the canaries hanging by the door there. <laughs> Plus, you know, when he's not there, the smell is gone. Okay, okay, so it's not the cabin itself? No, no, no. no. It's, I think it's like a, the aroma is like a living organism that has using uh, Stinky as a host, you know? <laughs> PBS should get him on Nova. A lot of my guys are rather concerned. Well, of course they are, Harold, because they are yuppie whiners. N no! Oh. Don't even, you know, come on, that's not fair. You know we don't even want to be here either. It's just this was the only resort that wasn't booked, and, you know, I thought you'd appreciate the money. No, I, I don't mind the money. I just don't want to have to do anything for it. <laughs> Excellent. That's perfect. That's exactly what my boss was hoping you'd say. Uncle Red, on behalf of Multicore International Incorporated, I am authorized to extend to you a very generous cash offer for Possum Lodge, all its properties and buildings, excluding vehicles and boats. What? Yeah, they want to turn this whole place into like a world-class retreat, you know, for their, for their corporate executives. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, it'll leave you enough money to retire on. Yeah, well, what'll I do? Nothing, just like now. <laughs> for the Possum Lodge Word Game! And today's great prize is a brand new house! Roof! Shingle! And uh, playing for today's great prize is the lucky contestant, Mr. Winston Rothschild of Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services! Mr. Green, you have 30 seconds. Cover your ears. Oh. You have 30 seconds to get Mr. Rothschild to say this word. Disaster. Disaster. Yeah, 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 all right. And go. All right, uh, Winston, this is a really bad thing. Leaky hip waiters? No, 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 no. Okay. Okay, when there's a flood, what do you call that? Chance to sell my boat. <laughs> say, the, say the lodge burns down and I lose everything. What would that be for me? A fresh start. <laughs> Okay, what do you think of when you think of uh, hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes? Resort holiday. Uh, I'm talking about people hurt badly, thrown out on the street. Well, Middle-aged guys trying to rollerblade. <laughs> the Titanic hit that iceberg, right? They said that was the worst something of all time. Driving? <laughs> Almost out of time, Mr. Green. Uh, Winston, remember that you, you dated that aromatherapist? Ooh, disaster. <laughs> shop part of the show we call if it ain't broke you're not trying <laughs> joining us today is local explosives enthusiast edgar kb montrose what are you up for us there edgar 
Yeah, it is a beautiful day, but that's not why I'm here. <laughs> I need you to fix my explosives locator. Oh, this thing finds explosives, Edgar? Well, it will after you fix it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's a safety tool. It helps me find explosives that I might have left lying around or maybe just fell out of my pocket when I was running away. Yeah, well, it can't be good to be losing explosives, Edgar. Oh, that's for sure. But I always lose them. The bunch of us were having a campfire cookout the other night, and you know, in the dark, sticks of dynamite look a lot like kindling. <laughs> That must have been quite a campfire. Oh, the dynamite got her going pretty fast. <laughs> but it blew all our weenies out into the lake. I don't know much about electronics, Edgar. Well, it's probably just an adjustment. You see, when you push this button here, yeah. this unit sends out a weak electrical signal uh -huh. that the explosive reacts to. Then the machine can sense that and find it for you. Well, there's a thing here, it's at one and a half, and the dial goes all the way to 10. How high do you want me to set that? 11. All right. <laughs> OK, there you go. You want to give her a try? Well, let me just aim her down towards the boathouse. All right. I think I might have dropped a few uh, charges when I fell off the roof. <laughs> but this will help me find them. All right. OK, here goes nothing. I found them. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. You know, I've been hauling this garbage can in and out of the driveway every week for the last 30 years or so. And I've always had to do it myself because cruel fate has denied us the blessing of having a teenager around the house. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, you know, there has to be a better way, a way of replacing wasted energy with innovation and engineering. And then it came to me, huh? How about a mechanical hoist coming off the possum van that would do the work for me. If those scientist guys can make a cannon arm, why can't I make a garbage cannon arm? Here's what I figure you need. Some PVC pipe, a couple of 45 degree elbows, heavy duty fishing rod, a couple of desk lamps, a couple of coat hooks, and a trumpet. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is cut the PVC pipe so that you get an arm coming off the middle of the roof of the van, swinging out over the side, and then you glue the whole schmozzle together with this special PVC cement. Eight miles by... You really want to have proper ventilation when you're working with the plastic cement. I could have lost a few brain cells there, I'll tell you. <laughs> what year is this? Oh, well, okay, anyway, we, 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 got, we got the arm part. Now we need to add the engineering to it. So what you want to do, first of all, is duct tape the uh, coat hooks to the ends of the desk lamp, like I've done here. And this is in keeping with NASA specifications. These, <laughs> these hooks are designed to engage the handles of the garbage can, even in a zero-gravity situation. Mind you, if we get zero gravity here on Earth, I'm not sure that taking out the garbage would be a top priority. Anyway, all right, then what you do is you duct tape the desk lamps themselves to the ends of the pipe, yeah? And uh, make sure you hook up the lamp parts, eh? That way you'll be able to see at night because there are certain kinds of garbage you really only want to take out after dark. <laughs> now we need something that will separate the desk lamps out and also serve as a guide for our fishing line. Now that's where the trumpet comes in. We don't need the whole thing, just the loud part. Okay. There's our guide mounted in place, and now all we have to do is uh, run the fishing lines up from the reel, up through the pipe, out through the bell of the trumpet, and then uh, hook one onto each of these desk lamps. And that way, we can uh, kind of control the opening and closing of our, of our claw. Now all we got to do is to take this unit and mount it onto the roof of the van. Boy, if we only had some kind of a rotating mount that would give us the flexibility that we could sort of swing the arm around the... Oh, there we go. Okay, there's our 360-degree floating mount, and uh, I've mounted the fishing reel on over there with the lines running down to the desk lamps. So we're pretty well ready to go. Oh, I almost forgot. Mount the unit on there loosely so that you can raise the arm up and down just by leaning on the handle. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Now let's try out our garbage cannon arm. When you're talking wasted space, think of me.
I read an article in a magazine about what men can expect from their bodies at the age of 45. Apparently not much. <laughs> about now, our bodies are like our tires. Bald, soft, and leaky. <laughs> Most of us have put on a fair amount of weight. We're even a kind of a different shape than we used to be. Sometimes you, you look at your shadow and you gotta move something just to make sure it's you. <laughs> You're gonna be under a lot of pressure to get fit, but I say, don't be doing that. This is not the time to go out for a 10-mile run followed by two hours of weightlifting. <laughs> that train left many years ago. <laughs> and, buddy, you weren't on it. <laughs> you were in the departure lounge eating fries and gravy. <laughs> so I say, just relax, don't panic. Yeah, sure, your body's getting bigger while your brain's getting smaller. <laughs> But the two of them have gotten along for almost half a century by not expecting too much of each other. <laughs> Don't wreck it. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. A man, I, I don't even want to waste your time with this one, but you're lodge members, and unfortunately, it's a democracy, so you get to vote on this, even though I think we all know this one's going down the dumper. It's just a question of how hard it's going to hit. <laughs> Harold? Well, thank you for that impartial introduction, Uncle Red. <laughs> well, maybe you heard, but Multicorp has made a very generous offer to purchase Possum Lodge and all its buildings and properties. <laughs> It's a cash offer with only a couple conditions. The deal's set to close in like 30 days, right? And even after all the back taxes and environmental costs have been paid, each lodge member can walk away with over $25,000! <laughs> all in favor! Wait, 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 wait. Put the hands down, put them down, put the hands down, put them down. I'm the lodge leader, Harold. I'm the only one who can call for a vote. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, yes, yeah. you're absolutely, he's yes. absolutely right, yes. he's right. Okay, you go ahead and call for the vote. I will. In a minute, in a minute, put them down. Why don't you tell them about those conditions first? Oh, well, okay, the deal can't close until that tire fire's put out in the north end of the property. <laughs> that thing's been burning since, like, I don't know when. <laughs> That's a landmark, Harold. Are you asking us to turn our backs on our heritage? Well, if your heritage is black smoke and toxic fumes, yes. <laughs> All right, tell them, tell them about the other condition. Tell them. Well, this one's kind of obvious, but since Multicor is, you know, actually purchasing the land and doing all the renovations, they're going to turn this place into a retreat for their corporate executives from all over the world. So it won't be open to the public. Yeah, but the public never comes here anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's because it doesn't want to, not because it can't. Huh? <laughs> Let's get it all out here, Harold, eh? Will any of us be able to go to this fancy new place? <laughs> no. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, unless, of course, you know, you're hired to be an executive at Multicore, and I'm just, you know, I'm taking a guess here that that's a long shot. <laughs> All right, guys, so there you have it. They want to take over the lodge, yuppie it up like there's no tomorrow, erase everything we've ever done here, and on top of that, they expect us to put out the tire fire when we're barely halfway through the pile. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, who can believe it? And all this for a lousy 25 grand apiece. I mean, is anybody in favor? <laughs> oh, oh, Rick Green. <laughs> yeah. This is perfect timing. I'm just about to show my new educational film. That's the kind of day I've been having. <laughs> hey, I hope these films are helping out with your show. I hear they're very popular with people who don't watch television. Yeah, I suppose that's true. Why don't, you, why don't you get a professional animator, Gord? You're, you know, even a clever six-year-old would help, I think, on these things. Oh, no. No, no, it's much better if I do all the drawings, voice all the voices. One voice, one vision. One brain cell. This particular one is all about tree species, types of trees. You know the old expression, you can't see the forest for the types of trees. That's not quite right, you know. Doesn't matter. Oh. Hey, Gordon? Uh, not right now, but maybe I'll stuff my cheeks before I go. Suit yourself. Okay, here we go. Shh. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, everyone. <laughs> Tapping trees takes a lot of patience and talent. Uh, Gord, that's a telephone pole. <laughs> that is correct, Red. A telephone pole is still a tree, you know. Just because it has no leaves or bark and grows next to a road doesn't mean it isn't a tree. Oh, really? Wow, I didn't know that telephone poles were a species of tree. Whoa. Well, they aren't, Harold, and uh, telephone poles do not grow next to roads. Well, not until you plant them there, they don't. Here, dig a hole, Red. Harold, I want you to plant this cell phone. <laughs> Now, boys, let us celebrate the birth of this new tree with a drink. Wow, yucky. Ah, this isn't maple sap. Of course not. Maple sap comes from a maple tree. Oh, Gord, what kind of liquid comes out of a telephone pole? Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin? Oh. Yep. Oh, yeah. You learn something new every day. Until you drink nitroglycerin, that is. <laughs> to Mike's Teen Talk. Uh, a lot of you teens are trying to get a tough reputation for yourselves by packing weapons, right? Even if you can only afford a dill pickle that's sharpened on one end and wrapped in tinfoil. Well, I got a tip for you guys about the most sophisticated weapon you can pack, and it won't even cost you a cent. I'm talking about stupidity. <laughs> People think you're an idiot, your life gets a whole lot simpler, right? I mean, the teachers don't pay any attention to you, nobody bores your notes, even your parents will back off a little, right? But I mean, if you're a brainer, you've got no life at all. If people want you to answer all their questions and they want you to, to cure diseases and they want you to invent stuff like the weightless potato. You're way better off with a room temperature IQ, right? Especially when something goes wrong and, and somebody shouts, all right, who's this smart guy? You don't want him pointing at you, right? I mean, even in prison, even in prison, they keep the smart ones in way longer. They let the dumb ones out early because they're just idiots, right? And they'll have no trouble fitting back into society, right? <laughs> so stay stupid. You'll get a lot more privacy, you'll get really easy jobs, and nobody will mind if you watch Jerry Springer. <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, man. Well... <laughs> Put a lot of water on her, I'll tell you. More than we need it, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know me, Harold. I'd rather err on the side of safety, huh? <laughs> Where'd you get the fire bombers? Oh, uh, that was a brainwave, eh? I called the air rescue. I told them we had a tire fire completely out of control. <laughs> <laughs> they sure responded with a lot of firepower. Yeah, well, I may have mentioned something about PCBs. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, the fire's out. That's the main thing. Oh, no! Oh, no, 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 no! That's not the main thing. No, the main thing was how that water couldn't race back into the lake. Somebody dropped a cord of wood in the runoff ditch. Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, well, it just raced right down towards the lodge and flooded out the main dining room. Yeah, and then because it was Possum Lake water, it dissolved all the main support beams. <laughs> the building went down like Moose Thompson on roller skates. <laughs> It's a shame, too, because that building was perfect for seminars. It's one of the main reasons Multicorp wanted to buy the lodge. Yeah, I'm really upset about it. <laughs> oh, well, but now the deal's off. It's a setback, Harold. Don't say that. You're happy about I'm it. I'm not happy. I just adapt well to life. That's all. Don't give me that. You didn't even want to sell the lodge. I know where you're going with this, Harold, but I'm telling you, I had nothing to do with flooding that building. I know. I did. <laughs> Yeah. You did? Uh, yeah, I did. 
Because I know there's going to be a multi-corp around every corner. You're able to sell this lodge whenever you want. <laughs> Holy cow, you really are my nephew, huh? <laughs> and you know, Errol, when you think about it, if I didn't have the lodge, eh, I'd get bored. I'd end up coming down to the city hanging out with you, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I did it. Oh. <laughs> It's meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be okay, right back. Oh. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Nothing special to report. Put out a couple of fires, lost 25 grand, and coming home with wet pants. Pretty average day. <laughs> and the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself, and especially Harold, and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. Everybody sit down now, okay? Everybody sit down. You gotta sit down now. Take your seats. All right, get them up. Everybody get sit down. Up. Yeah. Get sit, yeah, everybody sit down. Yeah. All rise. Quando Omni Plunkus Moritabi. All right, uh, bow your heads, join me in the men's prayer. I'm, I'm a man, man but, but I can, I can change, change if, if I have, have to. to. I, I guess. guess. <laughs> All right, guys, you got to put away the travel brochures and the writing lawnmower catalogs because the deal's off. Well, okay, all right, all right. I know, I know. I owe you a reasonable explanation. Yeah, you don't know she does. Okay, started out as a good idea, then things got goofier and goofier. Next thing you know, we get nothing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>